Yang berbahagia, Datuk Syed Zaid Abar, Chairman of Securities Commission Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Abdul Wahid Umar, Chairman of Bursa Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift, Chief Executive Officer Bursa Malaysia. Miss Verena Lim, CEO Macquarie Group Asia. Chairpersons, CEOs, Board Members of Corporate Malaysia, Distinguished Partners, Speakers, Investors and Guests, Members of Media, Ladies and Gentlemen. A very good morning to everyone and thank you for having me here at Series 4, Invest Malaysia 2021. We are living in the change of history. Each and every one of us with the advancement of technology has the opportunity to determine how our future generation and planet Earth will be in time to come. I believe all of us present here are cognizant of the impact of climate change to the env human environment. With the recently concluded UNFCCC COP26 summit, the issue of effectively reducing carbon footprints and emissions have become the mainstay for businesses around the world. Thus, the organization of this event is indeed timely to enable greater dissimulation of general and domain knowledge on best practices by corporates in reducing its carbon footprints. It is heartening to see that more and more Malaysian corporations are aligning their business cooperation with greater ESG commitments. This is goes well with the Prime Minister's announcement for Malaysia to achieve net zero GHG emission as early as 2050. Malaysia had communicated its updated nationally determined contributions NDC, to reduce its economy-wide carbon intensity against GDP of 45% in 2030 compared to 2005 level. The 45% of carbon intensity reduction target is unconditional and it is an increase of 10% from the earlier submission. In addition, Malaysia's NDC covers 7 GSG instead of 3 GSG previously. As my colleagues made very clear at their conference in joint statement signed by a number of other ASEAN nations, this would be made possible by technology transfer, capacity building, and financing from developed nations. Our aspiration to achieve net zero GHG emission target earliest by 2050, pending the completion of its long-term low emissions development strategy by 2022. This appears to be the most ambitious in Southeast Asia compared to net zero targets from Indonesia by 2016, Thailand by 2065 to 2070, Singapore as soon as viable in the second half of the century, ladies and gentlemen. We live in what is probably the richest part of the world. This is not an economic reference, but instead, I'm referring to the biodiversity that still thrives in our oceans and our lands. This is also true when referring to the rich diversity of cultures and the civilizations that have thrived across the region for over a thousand years. Even today, in our rapidly modernizing economy, one can still say that we are people of the land and of the seas. Some of the most powerful and fruitful economic sectors are still in agriculture, natural resources, fisheries, and naturally, a seafarer shipping. These are economic sectors whose positive economic impacts have a wide reach from the most urbanized cities to the sum of the most rural areas. We owe it to the many people for whom global warming and environmental decay means an end to life as they know it. Quite clearly, the approach by us and many of our neighbors is one that will allow for sustainable and equitable economic growth that has the potential to enrich all lives, no matter how far from the city centers they may be. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The energy sector, especially the electricity supply industry, which is also under my ministry's purview, plays an important role in achieving Malaysia's sustainability goals. It is one of the economic sectors that is crucial in charting the path for sustainable development. Sustainability is always placed high on the national agenda. This policy is evident in many of government policies such as the 12 Malaysian Plan and Shared Prosperity Vision 2030. This shows government's commitment in furthering the sustainability agenda for our future generation. Be that as it may, it is important to note that for the energy sector, energy sustainability is founded upon striking a balance between ensuring energy supply security, environmental sustainability, and more importantly, accessibility to the people. In Malaysia context, it is an ensuring affordability to the riot. Therefore, as a responsible government, it is vital for policymakers to strike a balance between the three elements of the energy trilemma of security, affordability, and sustainability in providing energy supply to the riot. We cannot pursue our sustainability agenda at the expense of riot's affordability and our nation's energy security. Thus, in transitioning towards a greener electricity supply, Malaysia has set a target of 31% of renewable energy RE in its installed capacity in 2025 and 40% in 2035. To date, the installed capacity for RE in Malaysia is 7,995 megawatt or equivalent to 22.5 of the country's total power mix with hydro, including large and mini hydro, contributing 5,863.9 megawatt, solar 1,368.9 megawatt, Biomass 637.6 megawatt and biogas 124.3 megawatt. With the new RE targets set by the government, Malaysia's power sector's carbon intensity is expected to be reduced by 45% in 2025 and 65% in 2035 compared to the intensity in 2005. The method target will be achieved through the implementation of various sustainable energy related programs, which, including the large scale solar program, feed in tariff, safe consumption, and net energy metering program. The implementation of this program are expected to generate not less than 20,000 jobs of employment and investment value of not less than 12 billion. To Malaysian economy. I also note that the effort of Bursa Malaysia, our gracious host for today, and various ministries involved in the launching of Malaysia's voluntary carbon market to facilitate carbon credit trading, ladies and gentlemen. While I have touched upon the environment, the global agreements between nations and support and commitment from the government I have yet to make mention of an element that is just as critical, the population at large. There is great support from many sectors of the population, particularly the youth, who account for almost half of our population. This support or acceptance is a necessary precondition for the adoption of renewable energy as well as all the technologies that are required to make it happen. The National Youth Climate Change NYCC survey Malaysia revealed that 92% of young Malaysians think that climate change is a crisis. The Pew Research Center's International Science Survey 2019-2020 revealed that around 7 in 10 Malaysians, 73%, place more priority on environmental protection even if it comes at the expense of economic growth and creation of more job opportunities. 
while the COVID-19 pandemic raged, the threat of climate change remained at the forefront of their minds. These studies also indicated that for the youth, the opportunity to work in the renewable energy industry or a related green recovery sector was something that is welcome given their natural bias on the issue. Alok Sharma, the president for COP26 believes that every dollar invested in climate adaptation can result in up to USD 10 of economic benefit when Malaysia successfully transforms into a low carbon economy. According to Goldman School of Public Policy at the University of California, Berkeley, switching over the grid to renewable sources could stimulate the creation of 500,000 jobs every year through 2035. This is a future we can all believe in and support with all of our hearts, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for your time today. I hope you are all eager to hear from the panels of experts in their discussions about the various components that make up a successful effort in the field of renewable energy. Thank you to Bursa Malaysia and Macquarie for organizing this conference. I wish you a productive and enlightening session that is positively charged with the kinds of opportunities that you seek. Before I end my address, I would like to share a quote from James Cameron, if only to raise your ambitions. He says, the nation that leads in the renewable energy will be the nation that leads the world. Once again, I offer my sincere gratitude for your time. Thank you.